Hey there! Here's how you can use the Stylize Hair Pro to create your hair shaders. So first of all, I have a material here. Now I'm gonna quickly add a hair curve to the model. Right now there's no change because the material isn't assigned. To assign the material to the hair curve, go to the materials and UV section and select the material from this field. Now these are linked. In order for me to use the shades from the add-on in the shader editor here, I can add a node called the stylized hair pro hair attributes. This node was imported into the scene when we've added the stylized hair setup to the hair curve. Now there's a bunch of stuff here, so let's go through them one at a time to see what's what. First is the hair UV map. This is self-explanatory. If you need to map some texture onto your curve, use this map. This is the same as a texture coordinate, UV, or a UV map node. All of them will give you access to the UV of the curve. This color is a single color per hair strand. To control any of these, go to the shade settings under materials and UV. These are all the controls. In the quick menu, it is this button here. And here is the strand color. Now you may be asking, why not just uh, set the color from here, right? Well, this one is set from the material, so it's gonna apply to all hair curves that have that material. But this is a color attribute, so it's different for each hair object. I can set this one to be one color, and this one another. They can be different. One other use case is you can create masks with the color. Let's say I want to mask out this particular hair curve. Well, I can set it to white and the others to black. And then I can do something with this mask. Let's bring up a mix color. And the mask can go into the factor. And now I can set a color only for the mask curve. And this will be for the rest. This one is a gradient along the curve. You can use this, for example, if you want to darken the hair root. You can use a mix color and then we can darken any color here by setting the mode to either multiply or overlay and plug the gradient into the bottom socket. Now the factor is how much of this effect we want. And we can control the gradient with a color ramp. The end shape you can control from here. It will bring up a shade from the tip or from the root. You can control the contrast and also add noise to it. I basically created this so that you can hide parts uh, from the curve. If you plug these end shades into the alpha of the BSDF, but to see this, here in the material options, set the blend mode either to alpha hashed or for a lighter preview, you can use alpha blend, but remove the show back face. This way isn't perfect, but it can work in a pinch. And this is for EV. In cycles, you don't have to do that. So now we can fade in the tip here.
to create a more interesting hair effect. Another use case is if this hair goes into something or is under a hat, you can mask it out to hide it. Or you can use this for color, roughness, use your imagination. The substrand shape is going to be a map generated from the substrands of the hair profile. So it's going to be dependent on the type of profile. For most, it's going to give you a map of the unevenness. For the robotic profile, it's going to mask some of the sides. For the islands profile, it's going to give you a random value for each strand. You can control the seed and contrast from the panel. And some of these you can blur out. This could be used to give variation in some settings of the shader. For example here, we're gonna use again a mixed color node set to overlay this goes in the bottom and we can give variation to any color. If you have bumps in your hair strand, the bumps shade will give you a map of those bumps. You have one for each bump type. Similar with the braid shape, it will give you a shape in the weave here. With these three, you can mask any of the individual strands of the braid. Let's say I want this one to be a different color. I can use its mask as a factor in a mixed color node and then set the two colors. If you want to add any randomness to your shape, you can use this section. The noise is going to create a lengthwise noise along the hair strand. You can control its settings from here scale, contrast, seed, and also you can give it a twist. This time let's use this map for the roughness. This map is going to be between 0 and 1. So that would mean full matte and full gloss. So to control the values, we can use a map range. That 0 to 1 range we can change to something like from 0.3 to 0.6. These are the values for the roughness. You can also use this for bump, just use a bump node, noise goes into the height and this goes into the normal. Now we set the strength and distance until we get the desired look. And of course you can use this for color too, like we did before. If you have multiple strands in your hair curve i.e. we add them with the add brush. This random per strand will give you a random value for each individual strand. This here is the seed for it. 
If instead you duplicate the hair curve, so you have multiple curve objects, this random per object will give you this effect for every object. The seed for it is this here. Here are some masks for various things. This one will mask the ornaments. If you want to have the hair and ornaments in one material, first off, assign it to the ornament as well. Then we can use a mix shader node. And we can use this as the factor. Now we can have a shader for the hair and a shader for the ornament. If you want to use the bumps shade, you may not want that effect to appear on curves that uh, don't have bumps. So you can mask those with this uh, has bumps mask. This one will mask any curves that have bumps on. Just plug it into the factor of any node that you use to create the bump shading effect. In the same fashion, you can have a mask for braids, curls, or any curve that is mirrored. Ok, and finally, let's look at the anisotropic highlight. If you are making an anime hair shader, this one is quite a popular technique to create that distinct highlight that mimics the shine in the hair. It kind of shifts as you view it from different angles. If we look at the controls for it, we can adjust the spot position and the size slash width of it. Spot shift is how much it will shift when viewed from different angles. If it's set to zero, it's not gonna shift at all. At one, it will shift a lot. Brightness? Well, that's self-evident. This will control the level of detail. And finally, we have settings for distortion. Scale and seed for it. Now, to turn this into a highlight, one thing you can do is uh, to your color, add a mix node. Highlight goes at the bottom slot. And set the mode to color dodge. Then you can control the level with the factor slider. If you want to set the color manually, plug this into the factor, set the mode to mix and then you can select the color you want. If you want to bake any of these textures, first of all, we need this to be a mesh. If you are committing this to be a mesh, then you can use the mesh conversion settings and generate an armature. Or if you still want to use the procedural aspects from the add-on, but just want some baked textures, make a copy of this curve, then just convert this to mesh. To bake to a texture, first we need an image texture, create a new one with uh, whatever parameters, I'll leave these, just change the name. Now we need to determine what we want to bake, let's say this thing. Whatever it is, connect it straight to the material output. We need it to be previewed directly, not through the BSDF. 
straight to the material output. Once you did that, select the texture node, select the hair, there is the mesh, and with cycles, scroll down to the bake section, change the type to emit, and you can click on bake, wait it out. Once it's ready, I'm gonna bring up an image viewer, and we can see our texture. You should save the file to your computer, so as to not lose it. And now we can use this texture instead of all this. That's how you bake a texture. You can bake any texture, just make sure it is previewed in the output. We can get rid of the mesh now. So yeah, these are some of the attributes you can use with the Stylized Hair Pro to create your hair material. I think they will be quite useful to speed up the workflow. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. If you want to learn more about the add-on, check out the previous videos I made about it. Every relevant link will be in the description. Alright, hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.